What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. So, it's early in the morning. I'm at the shop, like always, working hard. Um, just finished up some paperwork and uh, computer stuff, exporting uh, everything we did yesterday and just getting everything in order. My normal morning routine. But, I had a few guys ask me, um, I had a few guys ask me and maybe want me to do some videos on, you know, the business side of it. You know, being a, obviously I'm a mechanic through and through, first and foremost, but, you know, I do own a shop. I do run my own business and, uh, you know, I don't think I'll ever stop being a mechanic or stop being underneath these hoods and covered in grease and everything else, but I don't know, you know, who's to say whatever, you know, my body can only handle so much and I've been doing it this long, so, but, uh, Wanting to get into the business side of it. You know, you guys ask me questions, you know, where did I start? What's my advice? You guys are thinking about owning your own business or running your own business. Um, you know, maybe we can make this a thing. You know, one, every, once every while I could drop a video and talk about, you know, some of the important things to look out for if you're starting your own business. You know, the things I went through, what to look out for. Just so you have that knowledge, you know, to know what you're getting into. But here it is. I'm going to go out in the shop, set up the tripod in front of the bay door and, uh, Watch the rain come down, get this day started, check it out. Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, so first we'll pretty much talk about, you know, my journey, you know, getting to where I was and kind of what it took. You know, obviously, you gotta be prepared mentally. It's, uh, you know, everything you think you know, you know, unless you've already ran a business or, you know, ran a business for someone else, you know, everything you think you know, you probably need to know a little bit more. But for me, getting into it, you know, I knew I wanted to run a shop. I knew I wanted to own my own business, you know, and I knew I didn't know enough, but I also knew that, you know, I was ready to fight and do whatever it took to make the business happen, to make it successful and try to set up, you know, on a personal and mental level, to at least do the very best I can. So, you know, what I did is obviously, there's multiple ways to open up in a business. Obviously, you could go just rent somewhere, throw some lifts in it, get your customers to come there, start advertising, all that stuff, and start a business pre pretty much from scratch. You know, you could go take out a loan and buy the biggest shop out there, or buy whatever shop you want, and, uh, you know, take out a huge loan and, you know, take out all the equipment on, on loan and all that stuff, and then basically at that point, you know, you're working to pay off your loans. Not to say loans are a bad thing or credit lines are a bad thing. You know, maybe we'll talk about that, but that's another option. Or you could do kind of like I did, is that, you know, buy into a failing shop or buy into a shop that, um, you know, maybe it's about to close down or, you know, because basically you're getting it all in one. So when I bought this shop, it wasn't necessarily a failing shop. It was more or less a shop that the previous owners had more interest in so basically they outgrew the shop they went to a bigger shop moved on you know they still had the building they still had the racks and stuff like that in here and uh you know i kind of swooped in and, and that's how i got my deal but getting getting through it i already had money saved up i already knew you know i you know i made good money as a mechanic i already knew i wanted to open up a shop i probably could have waited a few years before we did the deal but at least getting into it the bait, the foundation was there. You know, the racks were already here. Um, you know, pretty much all the shop equipment I brought. Obviously, you got to make sure you have your hand tools. You got to be as prepared as you can on that level. Also, you know, if you got shop equipment already, you know, if maybe if you already own a, a tire machine or an AC machine or a strut compressor or a bearing press or you know anything, a grinder, a, a, a vice, all that stuff helps. You know, having all that stuff helps. Whether you have it now and you use it at your shop. You, have now or whether you have it at home or in storage that's always nice to have always prepare always you know if you get something on a deal coming up you know you know you're not ready to own your own shop but you could get a good deal on a brake lathe machine or a, you know a press or anything a vice grab it you know grab it while you can especially if you can afford it put it up in storage so when you do start a shop you have access to that stuff and you know half the stuff is there but getting into it you know stuff like that I had I, I know I had um, you know getting the tire machine and a balancer and all that stuff you know, I, I didn't need that stuff right away. So I kind of, you know, opened up the business, you know, you, you need the rack, you need the know-how, you need the drive, you need the work, but you, you know, you don't need every piece of the shop equipment when you start off. I mean, half the guys out there that I know are successful shop owners, my old man, when he had a shop, you know, we didn't have everything then. We, you know, we just, as years went on, we bought it as needed. And what's great about buying, 
the shop equipment after you already have a business open is they're great for write-offs you know you can obviously buying shop equipment that's a good write-off half the tools that I buy are because of you know I get them for write-offs and things like that yes I need a tool but you're forever growing if things are forever changing I'm forever learning but after for me after buying the place you know getting everything all set up paying the you know paying the, for the business license paying for the insurance paying you know everything that goes along with it you know starting the starting the internet cable phone you know phones I needed I had to buy the phones for the walls and, and normal landline phones most of the business I do now I get forwarded to my cell phone so that's a nice thing to have that's another option you know a lot of business owners nowadays are just you know they're just bypassing the, the landlines and just having their business run off their cell phone or buy a secondary cell phone for your business you know it's another option but had to hang the phones on the walls, run the cable, um, the uh, compressor, plumbing was already here. I just had to upgrade a few things on that. But you know, I was I was prepared. I was ready. I had to make sure. I know my end goal is I had to make sure my customers came through the door. So I kicked you know I kicked it off. I did advertising online right away to get the new customers in. You do you know the coupons, whatever for you know the older the older generation people. You know the older customers. A lot of online stuff, a lot of, you know, top priority searches in Google. You do your Google optimization, have a strong website, business cards, flyers, all that stuff. Be prepared. Get it out there. Cold phone calls. It doesn't even matter. You know, old friends, let them know, you know, hey, I got a shop now. I know, I know two years ago you were asking me about your car and I couldn't really get to it at the time, but I got my own shop now. Give me a buzz if you ever need me. Stuff like that, you know, get those customers in the door first and foremost. And here's the thing too, guys, you guys want to own your own shop, but say you work for somebody, but you're doing side hustles, whether you're flipping cars or working on your buddy's cars in your garage or parents' garage or wherever you're doing it in a parking lot and all those, wherever you're doing it at, you pretty much already run another business. You pretty much have another, you, you pretty much run a shop without a shop. So, you know, start off there, start off small, you know, flip these cars. That's why I put these, I, that's why I put this content on my channel, guys, so you guys can see this stuff. Go out there, buy that one to two hundred dollar car, flip it, turn that into money. Use that money to start your own shop. Have a little side, you know, savings to work your way up. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, just put a little, a little bit to the side every chance you get. Build, build it up, and then still have your normal job and try to spend as much money with your family as, as possible. Because I'll tell you what, starting a business takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of energy. I mean, it's there's times where I'm here at the shop doing what's got to be done. It's got to be done because it supports my family, but I'd rather be at home with my family. So, you know, it's it's not just uh, the money side of it or, you know, the know-how side of it. It's making sacrifices. You know, I, I just, in the long run, it's going to pay itself off. And I know in the long run, my, my kids will understand and all that stuff. But you know, sometimes I'd rather be at home. You know, would I do it again? Yes, I probably would because this is what <clears throat> my shop and being a business owner is probably a little more lucrative than working for somebody. Yes, my last job I made really good money as a mechanic and I had less stress and less overhead, but I have more chances to grow with where I'm at now owning a shop, you know, and being able to make my own decisions and do things the way I want to, taking care of customers and customers' cars, than working for somebody else, you know, making them rich. And I've talked about that in some of my other videos. But, you know, getting into it, I hit the ground running a couple grand in the bank. I mean, after I bought the shop, I, I didn't open up any huge line of credit. And, I, you know, like I said, nor do I recommend that. But you have, you have other options. You know, if that's an option you could use, it just make sure that the loan you get into is a fair interest rate loan. Make sure that, you know, you know you can pay it. Don't be basically you know, working to pay off your loan, make sure that that's something you can afford and you're still gonna have money to grow and money for your house and, you know, money for your personal stuff, your personal bills and personal mortgage and stuff like that. It's a, it's a great option. I mean, that's what the banks are there for. That's what the, they set up these credit, <clears throat> you know, if everybody went out and just paid for their house cash or paid for their business cash, what would we need banks for? You know what I mean? Use what you can, use the resources as needed. You know, I personally don't use credit too much. Um, you know, the things I want, I know I want, I plan for them, I save for them, and I just go out and get them. It's a good and a bad thing. You know, obviously, me not using a credit line, I don't have the highest score that you, that you could possibly have. Yes, I have a decent score and all that stuff, but not using credit, they're not reporting to, you know, having everything paid off, paying all cash for it, you know, that may hurt you in the long run. You know, so you want a good, at least if you want to have some source of credit line. So these guys saying, you know, you jump, these young guys jump on these tool trucks, and uh, get everything on credit line and then they're working to pay it off, well, what other options do they have? You know, it's, if they don't have the money, if they don't have $1,000 to spend on a tool, 
that they can afford to just put out there and, and, and then hope to make their money back on, on, on the tool. Go out there and finance the tool, you build your credit, everything else, and as long as you can make the payments, nothing hurts. You know, it's, it's better than blowing all the money at once. But uh, after buying the business, I had a couple grand in the bank. You know, I took in my first couple customers, and I believe I mentioned this too, I took in, I took in my first couple customers with a couple grand in the bank after all said and done. I mean, it's, you know, after paying for the business and everything like that, you know, it was stressful. I was worried that, you know, we weren't going to make money. Luckily, we were blessed and, you know, we started making profit right away, but I prepared for that, you know, and then the overhead that came along with it, I mean, I'm still realizing, you know, after five, six years, I'm still realizing, oh my God, there's overhead to this, there's overhead to that. You know, this stuff adds up, you know, whether it's the plow guy plowing the lot, you know, the maintenance guy, tuck pointing the building, oh, the roof's leaking, oh, you know, oh, we lost that, that walked out of the building, I got to replace that now. You know, whatever it is, it's overhead, it all counts as money being spent. You know, gas in the car, uh, you know, the, the small stuff, these, 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 the RTV, the shop supplies that, you know, really you're not charging customers for, it's, it's on there as shop supplies, but making sure we have uniforms, making sure we have shop rags, making sure we have soap and hand cleaner to clean our hands, all that stuff got to count into consideration. Obviously, the internet, the phone line, the cable, the electric, you know, your utilities, all that's there when you own a shop. You know, obviously working for somebody, you know, worrying about that stuff's not there, but be prepared when you open up a shop. Just make sure you, you're ready, you know, have, have a budget and then be able to go ab above and beyond that budget. You know, and, it, and like I said, it's, you're gonna be forever learning, you're gonna be forever growing. Even with me here, I, it's, you know, we're working for shop upgrades, we're getting ready to build a mezzanine here on this back wall so I can open up some floor space. You know, not to say I've outgrown this shop. I'll de I definitely love this shop. I'll be here forever. But we're already looking. We're already looking out there for a secondary shop. You know, we're looking for a bigger shop down south somewhere. You know, to open up my second shop, and I want to make sure that this shop's prepared to support that shop until that shop gets on its feet. So you're you're always growing. You're always changing. Even shop owners want to be other shop owners. Even you know, it's everybody has goals. Everybody has hopes and dreams. Just want to let you guys know. If you guys want to be a shop owner, you know, it's possible. If you don't want to be a shop owner and you'd rather not deal with the stress and just work, continue to work for somebody if you're making good money, that's great too. But, you know, opening up your own shop opened up a difference in my life. It opened up, you know, more of a possibility for me, more of a possibility for my kids. I have more equity when I retire. You know, I'll have a business to sell. I could, you know, anything I have, you know, I'll be able to use for retirement. But getting to that, you know, being a shop owner and you got to set all that up yourself. You got to set up retirement for yourself. You got to set up a 401k or a Roth IRA or invest in stocks. Like I do, I mean, you got to set up, you, you're, that's not being offered to me. You know, my health insurance, no, no one's offering that to me. My employer's not paying that for me. And then on top of it, you have to offer it to your employees. So, you know, not only do I have to pay my health insurance, but I have to pay some of my employees' health insurance and I have to set all that up for him. Maybe offer him a retirement package, things like that. It's, you know, it's all there, you know, and getting into even hiring people, that's a whole world of things. I ran this shop for about a year, year and a half, pretty much completely by myself, me and my wife, and yes, there was a lot less stress than when I started hiring technicians and worrying about, are they gonna steal from me? Are they gonna come into work? Are they gonna mess that customer's car up? You know, and, and are they gonna treat my customers with respect? You know, worrying about that, when you do it yourself, you know, you hear that expression like, if you want the job done right, you got to do it yourself. You know, putting your business and your line of work and your passion and drive into you know one of your employees. You know, do they have the same drive as you do? Do they have the same passion you do? Respect your customers you do. You know, you're putting that in someone else's hands, and that reflects on your business. So you know, that's another thing to think about. It's not all about just the money and the overhead and everything like that. You know. You could have an employee, you know, steal from you. You could have an employee accidentally drop a car, burn the shop down, you know, having to worry about all that stuff. It's not just about the money. It's not just about not having a boss breathing down your neck. You know, it's about the stress and the things you, the extra stuff you have to worry about owning a shop. So, you know, just getting into a few things, guys. I don't want to make this video too long. I got to start my day. I got a lot of stuff to do, but I just wanted to put this out there for you guys. If you guys got any, you know, personal questions about you know my journey as starting a shop let me know down in the comments hit me on my email you know maybe we'll talk about it we'll make this kind of a thing and uh, you know dabble into the business side of it and uh, let you guys know what to expect you know the things I went through all I can give you is 
you know, through my experience, through my history, you know, the things that I did, I don't want to give anybody bad information and all that stuff, but I'll let you guys know there ain't nothing. I'm not trying to hide anything. You know, I'll, I'm share my knowledge with you guys. That's what YouTube's for and all that stuff. There's a couple great guys out there, great channels that I personally learned off of, but, uh, you know, knowledge is out there. Be prepared. You guys want to open up your own shop. I like making these videos. I like staying optimistic and positive on it. You can do it. Yes, statistically, nine out of 10 businesses probably do fail, but start small. You got to crawl before you walk. You know, do those side jobs in your parents' garage. You know, bump it up to a little rented space with one rack or two racks, whatever you got to do. You don't need a full blown shop right away. Work towards up because as you're doing it, you can use those as write offs. You don't have to pay so much for taxes. There's, there's options, guys. There's plenty of ways to do it. There's not just one route for anything. You could, you could, you know, even if your your family owns a business, take over their business. Like like my old man, I thought I'd take over his business, but I didn't. So, get into it. You guys want to keep this going? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think of the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.